So if you're going to make the half and half triangle wrap, you need to use short rows. And Caitlin and I decided to use German short rows. So it'll have you cast on either 190 or 260 stitches. This is a free pattern from Pearl Sosa. Pearl Soho, so I'm not giving anything away, and you'll need one stitch marker as well. If I was to cast on 260 stitches, though, I'd put stitch markers every 26 stitches, or 190, I'd put them every 19. That way I'd have 10 sections to count and make sure that I had the accurate number. I just cast on 10, and then it said knit to the end of the row, which I did. And then the next section says, knit to the last three st stitches, place a marker, you know, wrap and turn. It's that instruction. And let me just show you what that looks like. So I knit, when I'm doing German short rows, I knit one further. So I'm going to knit, instead of to the last three, I'm going to knit to the last two. Okay, and I'm going to turn the work. Then I'm going to slip the stitch and put a yarn over, or, you know, that's the German short row. And then I'll put my stitch marker on and I'll knit to the end of the row. Okay. Then you turn the work and you see that you have, you have the wrapped stitch over here and there's two of them wrapped over here. I'm going to knit up to that marker and what's going to happen is my rows are going to end up getting shorter and shorter because the marker is going to move across the needle from the left to the right. So I move up to that marker and then I take it out because that's a short row. I turn my work, I slip the stitch over, bring it over to the top, boom, and I put the marker back down and I knit to the end of the row. I'm going to stop and show you what it looks like when I'm done. So this is the shape I start to get. This is a mini version of the shawl where to, you know, when you're beginning your shawl, everything to the left of the marker will be little paired wrapped stitches, except I didn't do this first stitch, but um, these two stitches aren't wrapped and I did these two, these two, these two, these two, and I'm going to continue till I resolve them all or not resolve them all wrap them all. Okay, so I've done all the stitches except the two at the beginning and the two in the end. That's just my choice. I, you know, it's not right or wrong. And I have a whole bunch of short rows that will need to be resolved. So it says to break the yarn and pick up your new color. So I come along with my new color and I just knit. I'm going to take the stitch marker out for now. This is what the video was yesterday, and I resolve these stitches, I knit them together. This only happens once. This is when you're, you know, finishing with the gray, or finishing your first color, and moving on to your next color. So you knit. Um, sorry. that row and then you're going to turn it and knit back and this is what I was showing on the video yesterday of where you were at when you're picking up um, and going a new color and I'll go ahead and close this off and do it but the short rows are started here instead so let me show okay you. so this is just sort of a repeat of yesterday's video but um, 
I'm going to, because I didn't wrap the first two in the gray, I, I'm going to do the same thing and not wrap those. So I'll knit over here, turn, put in a stitch marker, and wrap this stitch. Knit to the end of the row. And here's the difference, obviously. I'm wrapping as I, I'm resolving rather as I go. So I'll knit the two plain ones. You may want to only have one at your end. Resolve, remove marker, knit one, turn, replace marker, slip, wrap, knit to the end of the row, turn, knit to one stitch before marker, resolve by knitting those two together, remove marker, knit one, turn, slip, wrap, replace marker, knit to the end of the row. and so on and so forth. And you see, you start to get that diagonal going this way as well. So what you'll be able to see is these rows get longer and longer, whereas the other ones got shorter and shorter. In the second half, I would, the last thing I do is resolve. And of course, on the first half, I don't resolve any until I'm completely done. So that's the difference. But mostly, and this is a short sample, so you think, oh, all I'm doing is German short rows, but you know you have 290 stitches. So the most part, you're just um, knitting. And this is like, when you get to the marker, it's just the top of the inhale, say. And you just have to pay attention to what you're doing at one point in your knitting. Like all of that was just garter, garter, garter. And then here, oh, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. And that you can do, you know, every one stitch out of 290. Some people have been telling me that... Um, this looks too hard and that's completely fine. I understand that and I, and <laughs> I wouldn't argue with you right now. There's, there's no argument for me about that things are harder than normal, but I just want you to not mistake the proportion of this little swatch and the amount of short rows you have to do compared to the giant shawl. And all of this pleasure right here of just knitting garter stitch is yours to have. And then, of course, when you're done and you've done your final one, you'll just bind off. So I'm not even going to put that in there. And why did I choose to leave two at the end? Probably not a good choice. Probably should have only left um, one at the end. But that was what I did on this swatch. So my last row is coming up that I would knit and I would, you know, knit to the last marker, knit the stitch with its wrap, and I'm sure then you bind off.